I think it's important to me to tell the truth. I think that I've been lying and being so deceitful this entire time that I don't want to lie anymore. I only have you, my parents, and my sister to have like my best interest at heart. And even like, even with you, it's questionable. As we get deeper into the fallout from Scandival in this season of Vanderpump Rules, what has me intrigued is the lawsuits firing away behind the scenes. Not only are Ariana and Tom battling it out over the sale of their co-owned home, but Rachel has filed a lawsuit against Tom and Ariana for eavesdropping, revenge porn, invasion of privacy, and intentional infliction of emotional distress. But Tom and Ariana aren't the only people incriminated in this absolute whirlwind of a lawsuit. In this video, we're continuing our deep dive into Rachel's 19-page lawsuit, exploring the final three allegations Rachel made in her suit, where she names Andy Cohen, Bravo, and Evolution, and accuses them of exploitation of her mental state and sabotage her recovery. This is part two of our deep dive into this case, so if you haven't checked out part one, you can click the link in the description now and go give that a watch before you come back here for part two. We'll be doing a quick recap here, but this will make a lot more sense after you've watched part one, where we explore Rachel's decision to incriminate not only Tom and Ariana in this suit, but DJ James Kennedy, Sheena Shea, Andy Cohen, producers at Bravo and Evolution, and even Lisa Vanderpump too. Before we get started, here's a quick reminder to subscribe if you're new. This channel is all about diving into the most talked about Bravo news and headlines from Vanderpump Rules to Real Housewives, Summer House, and everything in between. So if you're a Bravo addict like me, don't forget to subscribe to keep up to date with all the latest gossip, turn on notifications, and let me know what you want to see me cover next in the comments below. Okay, let's get into it. So to recap, Rachel's first three allegations were as follows. A, the hostile and unsafe working environment on Vanderpump Rules. In this allegation, Rachel runs through a background of how she came to be on Vanderpump Rules, accuses James of violence, and touches on his struggles he's had with alcohol in the past. She also accuses Bravo and Sandoval of encouraging her to drink a lot in the season leading up to Scandival, and states Ariana and a lot of their fellow castmates knew about the affair long before it came out. Allegation B was titled, Sandoval and Maddox record and distribute illicit videos of Levis. This one is pretty self-explanatory from the title. This is basically the allegation where she accuses Tom of filming her on FaceTime while in a state of undress and Ariana of distributing or showing these videos to others. Allegation C is where Rachel goes into the situation that we all know well by now between her and Sheena and the punch or push depending on who you believe. It's titled Levis battered after Maddox steals and sends illicit videos. Okay so now we're back up to date and we've made it to the last three allegations. Allegation D is headlined Bravo and Evolution capitalize on scandal and cover up defendants illegal acts. This allegation starts by stating that news of the affair broke on March 3rd in an article by TMZ and by March 4th had turned into a media explosion with tabloids reporting on the pornographic videos of Levis citing unnamed sources. The footnote included here links to an article in People titled How Ariana Maddox Learned Tom Sandoval Was Cheating on Her with Vanderpump Rules co-star Raquel Levis. As far as I can tell, the only reference this article makes to the video is Ariana Maddox discovered Tom Sandoval was cheating on her with fellow Vanderpump Rules star Raquel Levis upon seeing a racy video and a video that was sexual in nature between Levis and Sandoval was discovered by Maddox on his phone. This doesn't give any specifics about what was shown in the video or suggest that the inside source had seen or discussed the video in detail. The source also mentioned that Ariana found a history of inappropriate texts going on for at least six months. The allegation continues. Although filming for season 10 had already wrapped, Bravo and Evolution had a camera crew ready to shoot the next day. Scandival captured the public's attention in a massive way, went completely viral and injected new life into Vanderpump Rules. It also caused mayhem in Levis's life, culminating in months-long inpatient treatment at a mental health facility and her departure from the show. Fermented by Bravo and Evolution in conjunction with the cast, Levis was subjected to a public skewering with little precedent and became, without exaggeration, one of the most hated women in America. On March 4th, 2023, the day after news of the affair had broken, production directed Levis to film with Sandoval at her Los Angeles apartment. With cameras rolling, Levis confronted Sandoval for secretly recording pornographic videos of her and storing them unprotected on his phone. Sandoval had not only invaded her privacy and breached her trust but had also left her enormously vulnerable to a nightmare scenario of the videos leaking on the internet. Sandoval responded to Levis's fury with cowardice and lies, claiming falsely that he had obtained permission to record her. Seeing that Levis was having none of it, however, Sandoval ultimately offered a reluctant admission and a sheepish apology. Sandoval was clearly rattled. After filming ended, an erratic and unsettled Sandoval refused to leave Levis's apartment in spite of her requests. Levis was forced to have her sister and brother-in-law pick her up and drive her to their home. That day, Levis retained an attorney to mitigate the risk
risk of the illicit videos leaking. Once at her sister's home, Levis turned off her phone for two days, hoping the heat would die down. However, media reports suggest Sandoval was in a panic over the on-camera confrontation with Levis. Specifically, he was concerned that being accused of recording non-consensual pornography would paint him in a negative light. Sandoval reportedly threatened to cease all further filming for the show unless he was granted editing rights over the scene. Shockingly, Bravo and Evolution obliged his demand. Interestingly, if Tom did apologize while shooting the scene, it was in fact never aired. I only have you, my parents, and my sister to have like my best interests at heart. And even like, even with you, it's questionable. It's like, am I really going to put my life on the line? for someone that would cheat on someone that they love so much, because then that makes me think that you would be capable of doing that to me. So perhaps these allegations are true. Maybe he did have editing rights or some form of call over what narrative was shared. Let me know what you think about this one. The allegation carries on. The scene was selectively edited to admit any mention of Sandoval's illicit recording or Levis's lack of consent. This was part of a pattern and practice of Bravo and Evolution throwing Levis under the bus in favor of Sandoval. Recording someone engaged in sex acts without their consent is a crime and Sandoval appears to have admitted to it on camera. Portraying the confrontation as it actually occurred instead of protecting sleazy Sandoval would not only have been true it would have also been good television. But Bravo and Evolution had apparently decided that Levis would be their sacrificial lamb. Throughout the ordeal, they have sanitized the story to ensure Levis would be seen as the arch villain. On March 7th, Levis's attorney sent out cease and desist letters to the cast regarding the distribution of the non-consensual illicit videos. The letters promptly leaked. Levis also filed a police report and applied for a temporary restraining order against Shay, the cast member who had assaulted her on March 1st. By March 10th, Levis had decided to check herself into a mental health facility. Sandoval, for his part, tried to talk her out of it and begged her to participate in the reunion. Levis reluctantly agreed to wait on the condition that a mental health professional be on set in case things go out of hand given her fragile mental state and the fury brewing among the cast. Bravo agreed, then changed its mind. Levis then requested her publicist and confidant, Juliet Harris, be permitted to attend. Bravo agreed, then again changed its mind. By that point, the reunion was the next day, too soon for Levis to pull out, and she had no reasonable alternative but to participate. She also feared the legal implications of refusing to appear, given the draconian terms of her contract. And so she did so, but without the support she felt she needed and that Bravo had previously offered to provide. Now this part, if true, is really unsettling. If Bravo did, in fact, promise and then refuse to have support for Rachel on set in form of a mental health professional and or her publicist, this is incredibly morally wrong and probably breaches some form of HR requirements. However, this is reality TV production, and we know, sadly, at the moment, things don't work this way, and reality stars don't have the same form of protection as actors or other public figures. So while horrific, I'm unsure what charges could be brought against Bravo or Evolution here, even if they do become named defendants in the case. The allegation then goes on to state, at the same time, press coverage was slanted decidedly against Levis, who became an object of scorn and ridicule. Other cast members were vilifying her in interviews and waging a public campaign against her on social media. They could not have done so without the blessing of Bravo, which pre-approves all cast media appearances and exercises tight control over public messaging. Bravo had clearly decided this feeding frenzy was good for ratings. Various cast members and Bravo itself also released their own Scandival merchandise to cash in on the explosion of interest, including an I Survived Scandival long sleeve shirt currently available for sale on Bravo's website. To me, I agree, this also feels very morally wrong and adds more support to the likelihood that Rachel and her lawyers are searching for evidence to be able to name Bravo and Evolution as defendants in this case. The allegation continues. It is clear that Bravo deliberately sacrificed Levis for the sake of its commercial interest interests from its refusal to allow her the opportunity to tell her side of the story and defend herself, which she repeatedly begged for permission to do. Without exception, her pleas fell on deaf ears. As a result of this asymmetrical coverage, the public was not made aware of the extent to which Levis was victimized by the ordeal or the toll it was taking on her mental health. As the feeding frenzy reached a crescendo, Levis was subjected to a gag order, prohibiting her from discussing Sandoval's gross invasion of her privacy, Maddox's vengeful response, Bravo's cover-up, or the veracity of her allegations of physical assault against Shay who was publicly calling her a liar, accusing her of playing the victim and being falsely backed by others. In sum, while the rest of the cast savaged Levis's reputation and lied about her in the press, drumming up not only interest in Vanderpump rules, but also hatred for her, Levis herself was involuntarily silent, muzzled by Bravo for the sake of its ratings. While all of this may have been good for ratings, it was catastrophic for Levis, the human being who was forced into hiding and subjected to death threats directed at her and her family. Sandoval, on the other hand, received a development deal from Bravo for a job well done, along with a pay rise. 
I have a couple of points to make here. Was Rachel really involuntarily silent and muzzled by Bravo? Personally, I can recall a couple of interviews she did at the end of the reunion to get her side of the story out there. One in her confessionals and another with Andy Cohen, where Rachel called out Tom for forcing her to lie to the rest of the cast about how long the affair had been going on, among other things. So silent? I don't think so. There's always a possibility that these interviews with her were edited to suit the overall narrative. But again, I just keep coming back to how this all just feels like Rachel's way of getting her story heard publicly in a coherent way, since Rachel Goes Rogue isn't receiving the same kind of interest or viewership as the new season of Vanderpump Rules and other cast spin-off podcasts. Another point I want to raise about this allegation is Rachel's claim that Sandoval received a development deal from Bravo. I've scoured the internet for evidence of this, but can't seem to find anything. Although it's possible this is being kept hugely under wraps by everyone involved. The only mention I could find relating to a development deal is in the New York Times interview with Tom, where it stated that Rachel asked for a development deal as part of her financial compensation to come back to season 11, which clearly didn't happen. On to the next allegation, which is against Andy Cohen. It states, Andy Cohen exploits Levis's fragile mental state. As expected, the reunion was a train wreck for Levis of epic proportions. With full knowledge of her then dire mental state, Bravo and Andy Cohen took no steps to mitigate Levis's abuse, even as Cohen himself expressed concern about her mental health going into the reunion. One fellow cast member, Katie Maloney, had openly threatened to light her on fire. Another, Shay, had violently assaulted her. During the reunion itself, Levis was on the receiving end of unrelenting missives. Diabolical, demented, subhuman. A poo-poo head, fuck yourself with a fucking cheese grater, you fucking suck, you're disgusting, and I wish nothing but the worst fucking shit that could ever happen to a person on you. As she was berated, abused, and dehumanized by the rest of the cast, above all Maddox, Levis remained largely silent and stoic in apparent shock. Cohen later remarked glibly that he did not know how long she would last on set and chalked up her apparent stoicism to being really medicated. But Cohen and Bravo already knew that Levis was indeed medicated, something neither surprising nor remotely funny in light of what was happening to her. Let's take a minute to have a quick look at Andy's comments about Rachel being medicated at the reunion, which he made on an episode of Making a Scene by Variety. For Raquel's mental health going into the reunion, um, I mean, I still am. But actually, when I saw how unemotional she was, um, it made me think she was either really medicated. After this, Andy did later go on to apologize for these statements in an episode of his own podcast, Radio Andy, where he said that he didn't know that she actually was on medication and it was wrong of him to speculate. Do you think she was heavily medicated? I don't know. And I think it was maybe wrong of me to speculate on that. Once again, this allegation, which specifically names Andy, makes me think that he'll soon be added as one of the unnamed does. This suit isn't just about taking down Tom and Ariana for the videos. It's about how the entire situation was handled from start to finish and Rachel is looking to take on and retrieve damages from whoever she can. Now, the final allegation is that Bravo and Evolution sabotage Levis's recovery. It says, by the time of the reunion, Levis was utterly battered physically and mentally. And shortly thereafter, she checked into a mental health treatment facility and remained there for three months. Even in treatment, however, Levis could not escape from the claws of Bravo and Evolution. She was warned repeatedly by them not to breach her confidentiality obligations, which contain no exceptions for medical treatment or therapy. As a result, Levis was fearful of facing legal repercussions for her honesty and was forced to walk on eggshells. This caused her extreme stress and severely stunted her progress in treatment. Unfortunately, that did nothing to stop the vitriol. When Levis checked into treatment, she gave her dog Graham to her parents for safekeeping. Graham was traumatized by years of abuse at the hands of Kennedy and was not an easy dog to manage. After a number of incidents, including one in which he bit Levis's mum down to the bone and caused her permanent nerve damage, keeping Graham became untenable. Levis's family handed him over to a no-kill rescue organization and requested its discretion, given the intense public scrutiny of Levis. Instead of rehoming Graham as promised, the rescue organization, knowing full well that Kennedy had a history of animal abuse, contacted Lisa Vanderpump, who gave Graham back to Kennedy. So now, Rachel is using this lawsuit to address another controversial and headline-breaking storyline regarding the ownership of Graham. Again, not relevant to Tom and Ariana, and potentially the least substantial claim against producers too, if they are to be named in this suit later. Yes, Rachel is definitely a victim when it comes to being filmed without her knowledge or consent, but this Graham story feels like a bit of a stretch to me. So, this final allegation continues, saying, all of them, with Bravo's blessing, then seeded a false and malicious narrative that Levis had tried to get the dog put down. At around this time, rumors were circulating, also seeded by Bravo and the cast, that Levis was actually on vacation and had faked her hospitalization. 
Illustrating the depth of its moral turpitude, Bravo refused to publicly acknowledge that Levis was, in fact, in inpatient mental health treatment. Presumably for fear, such disclosure would undermine the storyline. Not only would they not do so, they prohibited Levis through her publicist from doing so. All of this caused even more public scorn of Levis, further unjustified harm to her reputation, and increased threats to her and her family's physical safety. In short, Levis has been battered and broken irrevocably in service of a salacious storyline. Unsurprisingly, Bravo and Evolution badly wanted her to return for season 11. However, it was abundantly clear that they completely failed to understand or appreciate the toll Scandal had taken on her. They warned her unironically that she must return to avoid having her story told by others and reaffirmed her prohibition against speaking to the press on her own terms. But the depths of her mistreatment in season 10 went far beyond what is acceptable even in reality television. And Levis knew that returning to the show meant risking a descent back into the depths of despair from which she had just emerged. I've done a deep dive into why Rachel said she wasn't returning to Vanderpump Rules in a previous video, so make sure you head over and check that out after this one. The allegation concludes, Meanwhile, everybody else got what they wanted. Vanderpump Rules remains on the air, continuing to milk the storyline Levis catalyzed. Sandoval emerged with significantly higher pay and a development deal with Bravo. Maddox has become a bona fide darling of pop culture, has a new boyfriend, and is starring on Broadway. For Levis, the future is less rosy. She brings this suit to vindicate her legal rights, if not to restore her sullied reputation. This part is so weird to me, just the casual tone of the whole thing. Everybody else got what they wanted. It feels a bit here that she's throwing her toys out the pram because she was the only one who hasn't financially benefited from Scandal. If, of course, you believe her claims that Tom got a development deal. I just don't think this feels like an official lawsuit here and it just reads as though Rachel is desperate to get her story out and slay Ariana for turning this negative into a positive, which, as the final allegation in her lawsuit, just makes no sense to me. It has nothing to do with Rachel's mental state and Bravo sabotaging her recovery, which is the allegation at hand. Don't get me wrong, I do think she's been the victim to certain mistreatment from Sandoval and even production and I don't doubt that her mental health has been seriously harmed by everything that's gone on. But to get upset that Ariana has a new boyfriend and is on Broadway and include this in your lawsuit is just truly wild to me. Okay, that's it for the allegations. Now let's get into the causes of action. The first cause of action relates to the charge of eavesdropping and is brought only against Tom and unnamed Doe's 1 to 50, not Ariana. It says, Levis and Sandoval engaged in numerous private and confidential video conference communications from 2022 to 2023. Unbeknownst to Levis and without her consent, Sandoval surreptitiously recorded their communications. Levis had an objectively reasonable expectation that these communications were private and objectively believed that they were not being recorded. At no point prior to to the confidential communications was Levis informed that Sandoval was recording their communications, nor did Sandoval obtain Levis's consent to be recorded. Levis is informed and believes that some of the unlawfully obtained recordings depict her in a state of undress and engaged in sex acts. Accordingly, Sandoval has violated the privacy rights conferred upon Levis under California law. As a result of Sandoval's illegal actions, as herein alleged, Levis has been injured, including without limitation by having her privacy invaded. For the invasion of privacy, Rachel is seeking all available remedies, including statutory damages, actual damages, injunctive relief, and equitable relief. She also wishes to recover her attorney's fees and seeks punitive damages in an amount to be determined at trial to punish him. The next cause of action is for revenge porn, and this one is brought against Ariana and Doe's 1 to 50, not Tom. It says, On or about March 1st, 2023, Maddox discovered sexually explicit videos of Levis on the mobile phone of Sandoval. The videos depict Levis in a state of undress and engaged in a sexual act. Sandoval recorded the videos without the knowledge or consent of Levis, who had a reasonable expectation of privacy, that their private communications were not being recorded and would stay private. Levis is informed and believes that Maddox obtained the videos of Levis from Sandoval's mobile phone without Sandoval's authorization and distributed and disseminated them to others, including but not limited to Maddox herself, Levis, and other individuals whose identities are not currently known to Levis. Maddox displayed the videos or disclosed their contents to individuals who may not have received them directly, including but not limited to Bravo, Evolution, members of the Vanderpump Rules cast, and other individuals whose identities are not currently known to Levis. Levis was not aware that such illicit videos had been captured by Sandoval and thus could not have consented to their distribution. Maddox distributed, disseminated, shared and publicized the illicit videos intentionally and knew or reasonably should have known that she did not have Levis's consent to do so. 
Levis has suffered grave emotional, psychological, financial, and reputational harm as a result of Maddox's distribution, dissemination, and publicization of these illicit videos. The illicit videos were recorded when Levis was in a private residence where Levis's reasonable expectation of privacy was at its zenith. Again here, Rachel is asking for general and special damages and amount to be proven at trial, as well as punitive damages. Now into the third cause of action, invasion of privacy. This one is brought against both Tom and Ariana, as well as the unnamed Doe's. It says, as alleged above, Sandoval invaded Levis's privacy by, among other things, secretly recording their private communications and capturing sexually explicit footage of Levis without her knowledge or consent in a manner highly offensive to a reasonable person. Sandoval knew or should have known that Levis had a reasonable expectation of privacy such that their private conversations would remain private and that she was not being secretly recorded. Levis could not have consented to Sandoval recording sexually explicit footage of her because she did not know he was doing so. The footage was captured during private intimate communications that Levis had every reason to believe would remain private. As alleged above, Maddox invaded Levis's privacy by, among other things, obtaining the illegally recorded, sexually explicit footage of her without authorization and distributing, disseminating, and publicizing it in a manner highly offensive to a reasonable person. Maddox knew or should have known that Levis had a reasonable expectation of privacy such that sexually explicit footage of her recorded without her knowledge or consent would not be obtained without authorization by a third party and distributed, disseminated, and publicized. Again, for this cause of action, Rachel asks for damages in an amount to be proven at trial and punitive damages. The fourth and final cause of action is for intentional infliction of emotional distress brought against Tom and Ariana and Doe's 1 to 50. This final allegation states, in doing the things and acts described herein, Sandoval Maddox engaged in extreme and outrageous conduct that transcended the bounds of human decency. Levis has suffered emotional distress as a result of the actions committed by Sandoval and Maddox herein described, including severe emotional distress, physical manifestations of emotional distress, anxiety, shock, embarrassment, loss of self-esteem, disgrace, humiliation, powerlessness, sleeplessness, and loss of enjoyment of life. Levis's severe emotional distress prevents her from performing daily activities and obtaining Obtaining the full enjoyment of life. Sandoval's and Maddox's acts were at all times extreme and outrageous and intended to cause Levis emotional distress or performed with reckless disregard for the probability of causing such emotional distress. Again, for this cause of action, Rachel is asking for punitive damages as well as damages in an amount to be proven at trial relating to emotional distress, anxiety, pain, fear, physical injuries, medical expenses, and financial losses. Finally, in her prayer for relief, Rachel asked for a variety of financial relief as well as requesting that the defendants, Tom and Ariana, destroy, delete, and stop distributing the videos of her intimate body parts or engaging in sexual acts. Which honestly, fair enough, I agree. Those videos do need to be deleted if they haven't been already. So what do you think? How will a judge rule? Personally, I do believe that Rachel is a victim of Tom's manipulation and filming anyone without their knowledge or consent isn't okay. So her claims against Tom and Ariana for eavesdropping, invasion of privacy and distribution of the videos may have legs and they could be required to pay Rachel damages for the emotional and reputational damage caused. But a lot of the other claims in here, especially the one about Graham feel outlandish, irrelevant, and unnecessary. I know it was a roller coaster, but I just can't help thinking that this whole lawsuit is Rachel's attempt to get her version of events across and have her say against everyone she feels has wronged her over the years, from Tom and Ariana to Bravo, Evolution, Sheena, and James. I'm honestly surprised she hasn't found a way to bring Lala and Katie into this too, but I guess we'll have to wait and see who falls under any of the unnamed does who are implicated in this suit. That's all for this rundown, but don't forget to subscribe to stay tuned for more updates as they happen. I'll be back as this story progresses to keep you updated on who gets named in this lawsuit and how it gets settled. This is just one of a few lawsuits being brought against Bravo recently, alongside those from Leah McSweeney for discrimination and Caroline Manzo for sexual harassment. And I wouldn't be surprised if there are more to come. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, and turn on your notifications. Plus, stay tuned for more gossip around Vanderpump Rules, Summer House, The Valley, and all your favorite housewife drama. And in the meantime, you can head over to our Vanderpump Rules playlist for more deep dives into Tom, Ariana, and this season's gossip. Thank you.